What's up everybody, Yogi here. Today I'm doing Ninja Rose Season 7 using only free-to-play Ninja. For my first team, I have nothing but Wisdom characters and I'm going to be using them to take down the final boss. My second team, I have a variety of Ninja. You want to make sure that you have AoE here. That's juices that hit multiple characters. And then for my last team, I did not end up using them at all. So they are only here for insurance and backup. So all you need to do is copy my first and second team as much as possible and you're good to go. And don't forget to leave a like on the video you guys, I do appreciate it and it does help get the video out there for more people who need help with Ninja Road. Alright guys, for map 1 we have these three guys, I'm just going to use two attacks to get rid of them and leave one to stall on. You do not want to stall with Curse Mark Sasuke here since he can strike back and take out the guy before you're ready to move on. As for suggestions, you can replace the wisdom characters with any one that you have, especially if they're from a banner. Uh, except Jirobo or Kushina, their ultimate hitboxes do not hit the boss, so any other wisdom character is fine. And before I move on, I'm going to make sure that I use my Curse Mark Sasuke's Jutsu twice. I'm talking about the one in the third slot since he will not be able to move out of the way from the boss's jutsu in enough time. So you want to have those perfect dodges up before you move on to the next map. Now that I'm on to the second map, I'm going to switch to my second team and I will be using them here on out until I get to the final map. My only forms of healing that I have here comes from Madara having 100 self heal, Fu having 200 self heal, and Jiraiya having 120 buddy heal. And if you want some extra healing, you can easily replace Rasa with any healer or a character that has field heal because he is the weakest link here. If you have yourself sounding Tsunade, she's very good to bring too, even without dupes, just for her healing and her ultimate in general. On to map 4, I don't notice anything peculiar here except Kitomaru does 200 fixed damage and Jirobo dodges on occasion, but aside from that you can just finish all of them off with regular attacks. I am not going to be stalling up for the boss here, it is totally up to you if you want to do that, but it is not necessary. So the first boss is Gamabunta. You want to go ahead and start using all of your Jutsu on him. I'm going to start off using Jiraiya and Madara's before, you know, the other characters since I want to make sure that I get slip damage on him. It does do more damage while he has more HP in general. And the reason you want to go all out here is on the next map you will get full chakra regeneration for your entire team. So don't hold back anything, go ahead and use all of your juices here. And you want to make sure that you finish off with either your second or third row because you want Jiraiya to move either first or second on the next map. Now for map 6 we have 6 wisdom units. That's why I wanted Jiraiya to be able to move early on. Now I can simply use his Jutsu and wipe them all out. On to map 7 we have Daidara. He has a countdown of 10 and then he's going to use his secret technique. His secret technique only does 1250 damage. It is not even that much. You see right here I am setting it to auto to finish him off. So you can literally finish him with regular attacks. If you have no wisdom characters you might have to use a Jutsu but aside from that he is not much of a threat. Now here I'm going to do something very cool. I'm going to attack very close to Tamari to move her slightly to the left. See how she slid over like that? Now I can hit both her and Gara with Fu's Jutsu. That is another technique you can use when trying to manipulate the opponent. Just sit them real close and move them that way. So now you can just finish off Kankoro with some regular attacks and move on to the next map. I want to make sure that I finish off with Pain here. So on to map 9 we have the three Sanin and Hanzo. I'm just going to use Danzo's Jutsu to get rid of two of them. 
and then Madara is to finish off the rest of them. And it's up to you here if you want to stall or not, but once again, it is not necessary for the next boss. Alright, on to the second boss, we have Kuruma. You want to use Pain's ultimate here to take out the head. If you do not have somebody that can take out the head, you're still fine to beat him. And once again, just go all out with your Jutsu, because once you reach the next map, you get back full chakra for your entire team and when I finish him off here I'm going to make sure that I finish off with my second row because I want to attack with Rasa first on the next map but if you're not running Rasa or another long range unit you can just go ahead and finish off with your third row so Jirai can go first So on to map 11 we have 5 Hokage. So all I wanted to do here is regular attack with Rasa so I can get some damage, hit all of them. And now I can follow up with Jiraiya and he's going to help deal some more damage to all of them because of his placement. Nothing too crucial there if you can't you know, get the same setup but it does help. Now from here you can use the Jutsu or regular attack but since both Fu and Jiraiya are 612 chakra I rather just regular attack. No reason to really use a jutsu since you're not in danger. Map 12, we have three characters that will use their jutsus and then cause a field area of damage. So I'm going to use pain to get rid of two of them. And instead of attacking Sakura here, I'm just going to move away so that she attacks Rasa. Since I knew he was going to get his turn next, I could easily move him out of the acid field. So from here, just finish her off with some regular attacks. They do not have that much HP here. The damage can just rack up if you have too many of your characters in the poison field. So on the map 13, you got some poison clouds on the side and then three ninja to deal with. You can easily use a jutsu and wipe them all out here. And that's what I'm going to do with Jiraiya. But I'd usually finish off this map with my second row because I want Rasa to go first and once again this only applies if you're using him if not you know it depends on the hitbox of the character you're bringing but I'm going to attack down here have Neji stick to where Danzo is and I'm going to use Rasa's ultimate and you can hit all three characters here but you saw I missed last second that's totally fine all the enemies here have 8500 damage and yeah, if you don't have Rasa, I was using Soku last time. If you don't know who that is, that's the Ambu girl that was on Shikamaru Haiden. She was in the emergency mission with Ro, who no one uses. But uh, yeah, her ultimate does 8,000 and it was enough to get them down very low but not finish them off. But when it comes to the rest of the enemies here, you can finish them off with regular attacks and move on to the boss since you will be there for a little bit. Alright, so now we're on to the third boss, Manda. You want to go ahead and start using Madara and Jirai's GC to get some slip damage on them because he does have a lot of HP. And it does stack, so it will, you know, do more over time. You saw it did 22 the first time, now it's doing 4,100. Now, unlike the other bosses, once you beat Manda, you do not get full chakra back, you just get times two chakra recovery. So you need to stall back up here after a little bit. So I'm going to start using my Jutsus, get some good damage on them, along with the slip damage. Now the main goal here is to make sure that I have Pain's ultimate ready once I get to the next map and that I finish off with whoever's before him. So I need to finish off Manda with either Madara or Rasa. So I'm just going to keep attacking and getting him down as low as possible until then. 
Now here's where my healing situation becomes, you know, a little bit uncomfortable since I can only recover 420 at a time. When it comes to his hidden snake lance, there's no way to tell where he's going to attack. He can attack from the top or bottom. It's random. And then the biggest thing you need to avoid is the danger on top when he uses the snake fangs. Because if he poisons you, you will be losing more HP than you can heal since his slip damage is pretty high. So I'm just going to last as long as I possibly can until I get Pain's ultimate ready. Then I'm going to finish him off. On to map 16, we have full team 7. This is why I wanted Pain to go first since I can hit all the characters, bring them together. Now they're all going to survive, even though he's max limit broken. But now I'm just going to finish them all off with Donzo, and that's very easily done. Map 17, we got team Awesoma. Now the thing about Choji is he randomly will dodge. No way to know exactly when. And then when it comes to their continuous, Choji does do an attack boost before he attacks. Awesome just attacks twice. But now I'm going to use Jirai's Jutsu. And I'm able to hit everybody. You see Choji did dodge there, but slip damage still got on him. That's perfectly fine. So now that Eno is left, you can go ahead and stall on her before moving on to the next map or you can just take her out now, it's up to you. If you want to play it safe, of course, stall up. On the map 18, we have Team Kurenai. I'm going to go ahead and go for Madara's ultimate here. It is much better to go for his Jutsu twice, however, because even though it says 2.2, times damage it's really 3.3 after the first attack boost then it's 4.4 after the second one which does deal more damage than his ultimate in general now i'm going to use jiraiya i was able to take out kurenai kiba's just barely hanging on there the main thing you want to do here is pretty much use your jutsus and get rid of all of them down to one and you know stall back up for the next map as for all of their specialties, they pretty much will stop you from healing, so you definitely want to take them out quickly before they seal everybody. And Hanana does give some form of healing just from being next to the other characters, so you definitely want to keep them apart. When it comes to stalling, by the way, it is best to have Fu stall against them since Donzo does give her a little bit of dodge percentage, unless the enemy's heart, of course. You don't want to do that. But here I do mess up. As you see, he's going to attack just Fu, and I ended up misclicking, and you know, I thought Pain was going next or something, but yeah, I misclicked there, and he did hit everybody, so. Make sure you are careful there. I'm really lucky he did not steal anybody. Otherwise, I would have been in a little bit of trouble there. But when it comes to this map, I want to make sure that I finish off with pain. So Fu gets to go first on the next map. Now we're on to map 19 with the jerks of PvP. If you do not have them, like me, 
Now, what I'm going to do here is attack to the right of them and move them close to each other so I can combo them easier. When they use their Jutsu, they both get an attack boost, but the difference is Naruto gets 8,000 HP worth of healing and Sasuke gets five perfect dodges. So that's why I was attacking Sasuke first. Now that I ate up his perfect dodges, I can start using my Jutsu on him. Now, you can leave one to stall on. The way they work is they will regular attack a few times, they will try to use their support again, and afterwards they will go for their ultimate. Now the first ultimate does like 4,700, so it is a lot of damage. Not too much to handle if you have a skill unit, but remember that they do keep getting the attack boost over time, so you don't want to spend too much time here. So now we're on to map 20, the boss is Shikaku. Now I'm going to switch to my wisdom team to get as much damage on him as possible. And now you'll see what I mean when I said you want to take your Sasuke in the third row and use his perfect dodge jutsu a few times before you move on. So go ahead and use Jugo and then follow up with Curse Mark Sasuke. I want to use both of my Sasuke's first because Jugo does have a field skill attack boost and they will benefit the most from it. So you see right there, he's going to use his shuriken twice and it does not deal any damage. That's all I was trying to avoid. So follow with another one of Sasuke's Jutsus. Now I'm going to go ahead and use Zetsu's ultimate. You do have the option to run a slightly different team and use Zetsu's slip damage to eat away at his HP, but you will require a healer for that, especially since most of my characters here are Wisdom. And by the way, those two slots down there will not hit you, only the two on top. So those are the only ones you have to worry about. Going to use Nagato's ultimate. He's able to hit all the spots. Now if I had any other wisdom character that could hit the spot behind the head, I could get rid of that and definitely last a little longer. Now that I use Sage Naruto's ultimate and guys HP pretty low, this team is going to be defeated. And that's perfectly fine because you see how low his HP is. I'm going to switch back to my main team now. Remember, I still have a backup team as well, and that's pretty much good game now. And if you can't hit the back spot of the head with the ultimate, any rectangle hitbox jutsu can reach that spot just fine. Gonna go ahead and use Donzo's ultimate, and that's pretty much it. Ninja Row Season 7, using only free-to-play ninja. As always, you can replace any of these ninja with you know, a banner character that does the same job as them. If you got the Sani and Sunade, definitely a good replacement for Rasa. If you guys enjoyed the video and this helped you out, don't forget to leave a like, drop a comment, and subscribe. Peace.